2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. Shalom, shalom, brother. How you doing? What's your name? Scott. All right, Gamliel. All right, so how long have you been listening? Two minutes. Did you learn anything so far? Uh, I'm just listening right now and everything like that. But I mean, I've read a little bit and everything. I've seen some things online and everything like that. So I know you guys out here, so I okay. got a little time to listen. All right, great. So you know you're an Israelite? Yeah. Okay, where tribe you from? Judah, okay, all praises. So what we come out here to do is to teach our people the gospel. The gospel is the good news according to the Bible. Because the Bible gives us our identity. It gives us our heritage and our culture so that we can return back to God. Read what you got. The book of Mark, chapter 16 and verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So the Bible says to go out into all the world and to preach the gospel. The gospel, like I said, is the good news. And he that believes and is baptized, meaning cleanses his mind of sin, will be saved. But if you don't believe, you'll be damned. So what we come out here to do is to teach the laws because the laws of God is what cleanses our people. You understand that? So now, I'm sorry. So now, what we also come out here to do is to, to show our people the things that are going on in society is prophesied in the Bible. Give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. We have to first understand that we as a people have been cursed by God because we forsook his laws. So returning back to them, that's how we get saved and that's how we get salvation. You understand? Yeah. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now the Bible says all these curses will come on us if we did not listen to God. So now give me verse 48. Because us being at the bottom, it's not by coincidence. It's because God said, if you don't hearken unto my laws, I will put you at the bottom and I will put your enemies over you. Start at verse 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. The they is the curses. They'll be a, because what what does a sign represent? If you see a sign on the building, it's a warning. It's a, it's a warning, or it lets you know what that building is is there for. You understand? Like the sign right here. This is how we identify this particular train station. So these curses is how we identify who we are. Once again, the gospel, the good news, is us being able to find our identity in the Bible. We don't learn who we are in school. We don't learn who we are when we go to church. We're certainly not seeing, learning who we are when we look on the television and in the movies. We're depicted as what? The bad guy, the, the, the criminals, the robbers. Every time you turn on the news, we are the ones who are, who are doing the crime and who are doing the bad things in society. But the Bible says otherwise. Do you understand? When we return back to God and repent, we become, we come back to who we really are. That's how we get salvation. You understand, Rio? Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Right. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, and, and for the abundance of all things, 
therefore, so because we had the laws at one time, we understood who we were, we were in our homeland and everything else, but because we said, you know what, I don't really want to do that, God said, therefore, because you don't want to do that, Reed, shalt thou, sh shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall sin against thee. So God sent our enemies against us because we didn't want to do what he said. Read. In hunger, right. and in thirst, right. and in nakedness. So basically everything that we could ever want. In hunger, meaning any time anytime that we want food, we have to go to our enemies. In thirst, when we're thirsty, we have to go to our enemies. And what else? And in want of all things. Read. From uh, hunger and thirst. And in nakedness. And in nakedness, meaning our clothing. The basic necessities for life, we have to turn to our enemies. We don't have, think about Jamaica Avenue. Jamaica Avenue, how many different retail stores and shops are set up right here in the ghetto? Where our people are, and how many of our people are running all of those businesses? Like the brother said earlier, a lot of the time, we'll say for instance, we live here in Queens. We have to travel way to Manhattan just so that we can provide for our families. So that means we have to leave the ghetto, go all the way into a prospering neighborhood, work for the other nations, our enemies, then we have to bring that small paycheck back here to the ghetto where we still don't see our people thriving. You know what that is? That's a curse. That is a curse from God. It's not by coincidence. Incidents. It's not by, it's not because, oh, well, you know, it, it's just like that. It's because we sinned against our God. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. So now the Bible says he shall put a yoke of iron upon our necks until he has destroyed us. Where's that? That's the other one. Nah. I don't want to take it because the wind is going to blow it. Yeah, yeah. But can you see the depiction? I've seen the image that you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, you've seen the image. Our people are, are visual people. We, sometimes we need to see what actually happened because because it's not being taught, we seem to forget that it actually happened. We, we, don't, we don't connect like we once did. When I was coming up in school, I was taught by my parents that, listen, this happened because we have to first acknowledge that those things happened in the past before we can ever move forward. You understand? This, the Bible says that these curses will be on us as a sign for us to look at and wonder, why is this happening? Where do I get my answers from? Going back into the Bible. Just like I was saying, Jamaica Avenue, run by so many different nations. Is that a curse in the Bible? It is, verse 16. Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 16. Cursed shall thou be, shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So the Bible says, cursed shall we be in the city. Because why? We did not keep God's commandments. So now, these are just a couple of curses. There are many more. But I just want to know, do you have any questions? No, I guess where's your camp? I guess that's it. Where's, where's your camp? Where's our camp? Our, our, we congregate in Mount Vernon. Okay, I think I, I, think I have a friend. You could, okay. Yeah. So, with some of the things that you're going to learn today, are you going to stop by the school today? Oh, I can't. I got to go someplace today, but I've definitely been interested in Okay. Let me ask you a question. What's your name again? Scott. 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 You watch the news? Um, Did you hear about what happened yesterday in New Zealand? Absolutely. What do you think that that mass shooting and mass murder has to do with you? Uh, well, basically, you have someone who's a white Oh. How, how so? How do you think? Well, that was, that was the ultimate goal. Uh, to come and destroy people who uh, don't uh, abide by his law. So, okay, okay. The, the shooter yesterday, he, his, that was a quote? Or that was his base, base, that was his MO? Yeah, that's how I feel. Was to destroy anyone who goes against his laws. Yeah, his laws, yeah. Okay. Do, do you think that that's in the Bible? Do you think that that was just coincidence that he just woke up and wanted to have a mass murder? Or do you think that it's prophesied that these types of things are going to happen in the last days, in the yeah, times that yeah. we're living? Yeah, it's prophesied that they want to destroy us. Yeah. It's prophesied that they want to destroy us. Yeah. Okay. 
Give me um Second Ezra chapter fifteen verse one. You're right. It is prophesied that they do want to destroy us, and it's it's prophesied that these things must happen before the end comes. Yeah. Before we get saved, it has to get worse before it gets any better. You understand? So give me Second Ezra chapter fifteen, verse, start at verse. Uh, start at verse five. The book of Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, verse five. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So the Bible says, behold, meaning you have to behold, you have to be watching, you have to be aware of what's going on. You can't just be in the dark. Because, you know what, a lot of our young kids today, they're in the dark because they're, they're following all the distractions that are pushed by the media. All the rap music, all the love and hip-hop, all the sports. They could care less about what's happening that's affecting them whether they realize it or not. But this destruction that's happening, it could have easily been right here in Southside Jamaica, Queens. Like that. It, it takes nothing. So God is saying, behold, I will send... What? Lord? Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword? The sword, that means destruction, read on. Famine? Famine. What's going on in um, Venezuela? Ah, uh, yeah, the political um, um, uplift. The political uplift, uplift in that area. They're blocking the food. You know that they did that to us way back when we when they sieged Jerusalem? When they were destroying our people? When they forced us? When Christ said, flee Jerusalem, meaning flee into the mountains. That's when they, uh, Titus and Vespasian, they conquered Jerusalem in 70 AD and we were forced to either die or flee into the mountains. Christ told us that. So they're doing the same thing to us again today. You understand? So that's the famine. Because they're blocking the food, again, this is proving that the Bible is a true book. Famine is coming back into the earth. Read on. Dude, I got a rock. Death? Thank you so much. You got a rock? I got one more scripture for you. Okay, one good. more scripture before you go. Read, finish that up real quick. It says death and destruction. So death and destruction is also going to come into the land, but one more scripture for you before you go. Get uh, the beard. Leviticus 21 to 5. Because remember, the Bible said, well, the first scripture that we read in Mark 16, 15, the gospel has to be pushed to all the world. The gospel is the good news that you are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, but God requires you to keep his commandments because it says, he that believes and is baptized, meaning cleansed by the laws, will be saved. But he that doesn't believe, he that disregards it, shall be damned. So here's a law for you, my brother. Read the book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their heads, neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. So this is a law that God commands his men. He says they shall not make baldness upon their head. Now, if you go bald naturally, it is what it is. You can't control that. But now when you shave it off, that's willfully sinning. Same thing with your beard. My beard doesn't grow in all the way, but where it does grow in, I let it grow because it's natural. Now, when you shave it it off that's where the sin comes in the Bible says that sin is the is the transgression of God's laws meaning the breaking of his laws so now if you want to be saved my brother one thing that you can do naturally is just let your beard grow if you're if you're losing the hair that's on top of your head that's okay but where it is growing just let it grow you can trim it down that's fine but shaving it destroying the, the, the natural lining of it that's where the sin lies my brother so I, I pray that you continue to watch the classes I pray that you want they come to the school yeah. and take heed to these commandments right. because the destruction that's happening in the world it's prophecy from God it must happen before we get saved all right, all right my brother all right, shalom. All right. so I don't want my be my people to be unprepared at the coming of Christ right. I want my people because God wants his people to keep his commandments right. what does that mean women not wearing pants brothers not shaving off their beards honoring the Sabbath day according to the Bible not eating shrimp, not eating crab, and let's let's get some more uh, common ones. Not gangbanging, not selling drugs, not shooting one another, not robbing from one another, not having promiscuous sex. All of these things are going on in the ghetto. So I don't want my people to be unprepared at the coming of Christ. I want to see my people repent. Read on. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you. 
by any means because guess what the Bible prophesies that there will be many deceivers coming out here because when if a pastor if a man is holding a Bible and says don't worry everything's going to be peaceful everything's going to be okay this is your year of prosperity yes. that's not what the Bible prophesies right. the Bible prophesies that in the last days the times that we're living in we will see destruction we will see famine we will see plagues we will see poverty right. because people aren't keeping the commandments of the right. of the Lord right. Right. let no man deceive you by any means right. for that 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 for that that day shall not come meaning the coming of Christ will not come unless what except they come a falling away first and except they come a falling away first my sister so what we're going over right now is we're, we're proving that the current events that we see the things that we see going on in the news is because it's prophesied in the Bible so we're talking about the coming back the return of Jesus Christ to redeem his people you believe in the Bible Sister, you believe in the Bible? Uh, la, la Biblia? Espanol? Do you speak English, my brother? Okay, come on, come on. Bring your mom. That's your mom and your sister? Okay, come on. It's okay. It's okay. You don't want to come? Okay. What's your name, bro? Norley? Okay, I'm Gamliel. Nice to meet you, my brother. Yeah. What's your name, sister? Huh? Bianca? Brianna? What's her name? I'm, I'm sorry, sis. I can't hear you. Don't What's your name? What's your name? Okay. Well, let's just stay around and listen. So what we're going over right now, my brother, is the truth according to this Bible. Do you know what the truth is? I'm not, really. not really? Okay. Do you know who this is? You don't know who that is? Have you ever seen you go to church? Yeah. Have you ever seen? Oh, you said that that's Jesus. You've seen this picture in church before? Yeah. Hey, be honest. Have, does, is that picture in your house anywhere? Yeah. Or at a butler's house? Have a picture like a statue? Yeah. Okay, same difference, either a picture or a statue is still um, referring back to the same thing. Did you know that this, that the Bible does not describe Jesus Christ as looking like that? Do you know that the Bible describes Christ as having woolly hair like that image? And that Jesucristo es negro, no blanco? Did you know that? Where do you see yourself on, on that sign? What's your nationality, bro? Hey. What what country do you what country do you come from? Yeah. I thought they had from New York? Okay. Um what at uh where, where are your parents from? Ecuador, okay. So according to the Bible, see right there, you're from the tribe of Asher. From Colombia to Uruguay in South America, God calls you an Israelite from the tribe of Asher. Is your mom from Ecuador as well? Yeah. Okay, so you can tell her when you, when you go back to her that she's an Israelite from the tribe of Asher as well. So what we're here to do right now is to show you the truth because you said that you don't really know what the truth is and that's fine. So let me get um, John 8.32 and then we're going to go to uh, Psalms 119. Okay, because the Bible says that the truth will make you free. So if, if, we're, if you, you want to be free, right? You want to be free, you want to have understanding. The Bible says if you want that, you have to acknowledge the truth. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. 8, chapter 8, verse 32. Right. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So now you say you don't really know what the truth is? That's okay. We're going to read it out of the Bible right now. You want, are you listening, sis? Come on up. Come on up. What we're doing right now is revealing 
what the truth of the Bible actually is to our people. Read on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So the Bible says God's law is the truth. So to further push what the truth is, you said that this is Jesus. Let's get Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The first thing that we have to do is break down the lies that have been taught. Because if God's law is the truth, in the Bible, it describes Christ as being a black man with white woolly hair. This image is nowhere in there. So, being that you first acknowledge that as Jesus, I have to first tell you what the truth is and that, that that's not Jesus. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The root word to revelation is to reveal. So now I'm revealing to you the truth about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christo. Read. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things, things which must shortly come to pass. Right. Because God gave the understanding to certain men to show in the latter days, meaning today, the things that should happen. Because this image will be pushed and that image will be forgotten. You understand? Verse 3. As right, a matter of fact, just jump to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So now, the Bible says that his head meaning the hair that was on his head and his hair is talking about his beard because you see in the image he has a beard it says his head and his hairs were white like wool you understand sis meaning his hair texture was woolly like it was uh, like an afro you understand he, he had an afro type hair textured hair and it was white meaning he had gray hair read his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire so now it says he had afro textured hair and afro textured beard and his eyes were as a flame of fire meaning the whites of his eyes were red because jesus christ drank wine you understand so now before we go any further let's look at the pictures <clears throat> that we've been taught in the churches and in schools and on tv you thought that this was Jesus, correct? But the Bible so far has been describing him as looking like that. Meaning he has the white woolly hair, the, the, the white woolly hair for his beard, and his eyes were red as a, as a flame of fire because he drank wine. Does that image look anything like what we've read so far? Okay, just wanna make sure we're on the same page. Great, let's read on. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So now, do you know what uh, brass looks like? Do you know what color it is? I'm sorry? No, brass, like, uh, like bronze. Okay, think about the color of a penny. What color is that? It's like a brown. So a penny is, a, is very similar to brass or bronze. It's about the same color. So the Bible right here, read that part one more time. And his feet, like unto you find brass? So now the Bible is saying his feet. Let me ask you a question. Your feet, aren't they the same color as your hands and your face? So the Bible is saying that Jesus Christ, Hestu Christo, his feet were like fine brass, meaning his skin color was brown. Jesus, again, that's not this image. So what this is proving, what the Bible is proving, the truth of the Bible is proving that Jesus Christ, Hestu Christo, es negro. That's right. He's es no blanco. How do you say that's a lie in uh, Spanish? Uh, uh, this is a lie according to la biblia you understand this is a lie Jesus Cristo es negro That's right. Read on. as if they burned in a furnace so not only was Jesus Christ a, a, a black man or a brown skinned man he was a dark a very very dark black skinned man That's right. Right. that is the truth according to this bible what's your name bro you got a couple minutes for God? You got a minute to, to listen to the Bible? Okay, take heed to that flyer, bro, okay? So that's 
what we're out here to do, my sister, to, to show our people the truth according to this Bible. This is one of the first things that we have to acknowledge. So from now on, what's your name one more time? Norley, if anyone asks you, hey, well, this is, um, if you go to our brother's house or when you go back home, understand that this image right here is false, it's a lie. It's not true and it's not what Jesus Christ looks like according to the Bible. Right. And if anyone ever asks you to prove that to them, where are you gonna go? You know where? Show them real quick. This is the book of Revelation. Show them real quick. In the, in the this is the book of Revelation. This is the last book in the Bible, the first chapter. Revelation chapter one, verses 14 and 15, proves that Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. Yes, right? All right. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.